Welcome to this week's edition of Salt and Light Bible Study. My name is Minister Darwin Jackson, and I'll be your teacher for today's lesson. Uh, Salt and Light Bible Study is a ministry of Vernon Park Church of God, uh, where Gerald January Sr. serves as a senior pastor. Uh, this quarter's Bible study focus is Confident Hope. Uh, we're in Unit 1, where Jesus is teaching us about faith. Uh, today's lesson is entitled, why are you afraid? With our main scripture coming from Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, today's lesson, Lord God. We ask as we uh, look into your word, Lord God, that you would give us insight and understanding, that you would equip us with the uh, uh, mindset needed to uh, confront fear, Lord God, and, and to address it uh, handedly, Lord God, in our lives and in those situations that are uh, causing fear in our, in our lives, Lord God. We give you all the praise, all the glory, Lord God. We pray that you would bring forth fruit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, today's lesson is entitled, Why Are You Afraid? And this is a very timely lesson. Uh, given all that's going on in our world today, uh, from the recent surges uh, with the COVID-19 uh, Delta variant uh, to the social unrest that uh, our world has been experiencing, uh, to the current political climate in the United States and our ever-changing uh, and evolving society. <clears throat> Fear can be seen all around us. Uh, many people are struggling with the current pace of things and the instability often seen around us. Um, polls still show that 25% of the people uh, are still fearful of the prospect of public speaking and that the most powerful fear is the fear of the unknown. In addition, uh, this growing fear in society impacts our health in numerous ways, uh, creating an inability to relax, uh, fostering anxiety and panic in people, uh, fear weakens the immune system, uh, sharpens survival instincts, and leads many to a state of depression. Uh, it causes heart damage and uh, over an extended period of time and worsens, worsens memory, according to a recent study. Fear is an emotion that can be experienced by all of us at one time or another. Fears can range from our children's welfare and safety to job security, uh, with the well being of elderly loved ones, financial challenges, uh, the survival of a personal business, to challenges within interpersonal relationships, to even our personal safety or that of others. Uh, while fears may come from time to time, the Bible reminds us that God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and, and self-discipline uh, that he has provided us with through his spirit when fears arise. Um, uh, God wants us to exercise the power, love, and self-discipline that he has provided us with through his spirit when fears arise. Uh, today's lesson focuses on Jesus' disciples and closest followers and their response to a fearful situation. We'll also look at a couple of other accounts in scripture where fear was present and what the people of God did to prevail over the fear. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to, through 27. And this is where Jesus calms the storm. Uh, and in verse 23, it, it, it begins. Then he got into the boat, speaking of Jesus, and his disciples followed him. And just right off the bat, uh, this opening scripture speaks to the role of leadership and that of follower. Uh, Jesus leads and disciples follow, and we must follow where he leads. Uh, sometimes he can lead us into some difficult situations. And uh, if you've been um, walking with uh, Jesus for any length of time, uh, you know that uh, many times obeying his lead 
can place you in some challenging situations. But as we'll find out today, uh, just trust and know that he's with you in those difficult situations. So as I said, it reads, then he got into the boat and his dis disciples followed him. Uh, without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. All right. So this wasn't your ordinary storm. This was uh, a, a life-threatening storm. These disciples were um, petrified at, at the, the thought of their life being taken and them not getting out of this storm. This was just not a, your typical storm. Okay, and when you talk about a furious storm, the word furious is, means full of anger or energy, violent or intense. Okay, that describes this type of storm that they were in the midst of. And it says, but Jesus was sleeping. Uh, so before this, uh, Jesus and the disciples had in, been involved in ministry. And I'm sure, uh, just like many of us, grow tired when we do uh, uh, our jobs. Uh, Jesus was tired and fatigued from the ministry. He was still in, in that human body, and he had experienced fatigue and grew tired just like we do, okay? And it says the disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown, okay? I'm encouraged by the fact that the disciples recognized that their hope was in Jesus and that he was on board the ship, okay? So they knew enough to go to him, but the prospect of this storm uh, had them believe that they were about to drown, that things were about to end. Their observations of the storm had convinced them that they were going to perish. Uh, these were experienced fishermen, and I'm sure that they had encountered some really bad storms in their experience. They observed the storm in all its energy, violence, and intensity, and concluded that they would not be able to survive. But then the king of glory responded to the disciples and the storm. In verse 26, he replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Fear indicates a lack of trust in Christ uh, for these disciples, and that also applies to us as well. Fear indicates a lack of trust in Christ. Regardless of the circumstances, Jesus expected his disciples to have faith in his word. So the Bible goes on to say, then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Wow. The Bible says the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. It's as if Jesus awoke and rebuked two disobedient children that had gotten out of pocket. All right, that's how he uh, dealt with the winds and the waves. Okay, he rebuked them. And these disciples who were so petrified at this storm were in a maze to see it go from one extreme to another. Uh, it says, then the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The water is not sovereign, God is. D Jesus demonstrates the same type of authority when he raised Lazarus from the dead. Okay, and John chapter 11, 21 through 27. Uh, and from this account in, uh, in Matthew, one message is clear. Uh, Jesus was not at the mercy of this furious storm. In fact, his message to his disciples, his followers, was neither should they be at the mercy of this storm. You of little faith, why are you afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Jesus demonstrated his power and authority over this furious storm. And I'm sure for many of us, this seems sort of out of bounds or not on the playing field, but
But Jesus is teaching his disciples and us, his followers, that nothing is out of bounds or not on the playing field when it comes to exercising our faith according to God's will. Fear had taken these disciples hostage prior to Jesus rebuking the wind and the waves. These disciples were under the trance or influence of fear and were prepared to accept what appeared to be their pending fate. Jesus said, not so. What fears are coming against you at this time? Uh, before we continue on with the lesson, just take, take a quick inventory, one, two, or maybe even three fears. If you really looked at them are, are trying to creep up on you at this time. Okay, once you got those in, the mind, in your mind, let's, let's continue on with, the, with our lesson. Uh, this lesson of, 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 of Jesus coming into a chaotic situation and turning around is, is not a familiar, unfamiliar story. Uh, if we look in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, we see uh, corporate fear. Uh, in, chap in 1 Samuel chapter 17, um, we see a, a account in the history of the children of Israel uh, where they're at war against the Philistines, their forever nemesis. Uh, and it starts off in verse one that says, now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Soka in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes, Damim, between Soko and Azekah. And it says in verse two that Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley between them. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. That's approximately 125 pounds. So this, this giant had on a 125 per pound protective coat. You have to be a strong man to fight in a coat that weighs 125 pounds or giant, not a man. Okay, and it says on his legs, he wore bronze grease and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. This giant was born and built for war. He was a furious storm to the Israelites, like the furious storm that came upon Jesus and the disciples in the boat. And it says his spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels or approximately 15 pounds. So the point of his spear weighed 15 pounds, okay? And he's throwing this, he's using this as a weapon. It goes on to say his shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel's, why do you come out and line up for battle? Am, not, am I not a Philistine and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. And beloved, this is how fear operates. Either it will overcome us and rule us, or we must overcome it and rule it. And in verse 10, it says, then the Philistines said, this day, I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. <laughs> he sounds very eager to get this conflict started. Uh, in verse 11, it says, on hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Here it is, fear. Not just one man, but there's a corporate fear and operation here among the entire Israelite army. And then in verse 16, it says, for 40 days, the Philistines came forward, every, the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand twice a day, like clockwork. He came forth in the morning and the evening and took his stand to defy Israel for 40 days. 
So that's one month and 10 days. That's a long time to be in a state of fear and to be uh, under the trance of this giant of Philistine. And then as we go on in the story, uh, we go, uh, Jesse, David's father, sends him to the battle to check on in on his, his brothers. And it says in verse 22 that David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines, and greeted his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. When the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. There was a pandemic of fear resting on the Israelite army. Okay, and uh, as David was there, uh, he overheard them saying that King Saul was prepared to give one of his daughters in marriage and uh, whoever would go out and fight against this giant. In addition, the person who went out to fight against the giant, his, his family would be free or wouldn't have to pay taxes. Uh, so Saul hears about David's response to this uh, opportunity and calls for David. Uh, David tells Saul about his exploits with the bear and the lion that he killed and reassures Saul that this giant will be like both of them, okay? And you know the story. Saul attempts to put his armor on David, uh, but David's not feeling it. And, and he uses his weapons that he's familiar with. His staff, five smooth stones chosen from a stream placed nearby. And he uses his shepherd pouch and his sling. And it goes on that David meets the challenge on behalf of Israel and confronts Goliath in uh, verse 45 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And he tells him, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give all of you into our hands. So David races toward the giant with just his sling and, a, and five smooth stones. And with his first shot, he strikes the giant in the head, knocks him to the ground, pulls out his sword and cuts his head off, okay? So God delivers the Israelites from this giant, from this storm uh, through this young man, David, who was full of the word of God, full of God, all right? He had been trained uh, in, the, in the shepherd fields, uh, in, in communion with God. So he was the carrier of, of God's presence to defeat this giant. And this same David later on in life was challenged with the fear of being forsaken in his old age. And he addressed his fear uh, by calling out to God and rehearsing God's faithfulness over the years and reminding himself that God is forever worthy of praise. Yes, later on in his life when he's uh, a king, uh, he deals with the fear of the aged. And we, we, we find out about that in Psalm chapter 71, uh, verses 5 through 12. <clears throat> and that reads, uh, uh, for you have been my hope, O sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth, I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. And this word portent, uh, I wanted to do a little delving into that. And uh, several commentaries render this word in verse seven, portent, 
as monster or a gazing stock to the multitude. And so basically David is saying here, I've become a monster or a, or a, day, a gazing stock to the multitude. It's as if David is saying, although men desert me and look with suspicion and contempt on me, God is a sure refuge for me, according to Benson's commentary on, on uh, verse seven. And in verse eight, he goes on to say, my mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone, for my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say God has forsaken him, pursue and seize him, for no one will rescue him. And David says, be not far from me, O God. Come quickly, O my God, to help me. And then in verse 18, he, he reiterates, uh, that prayer. He says, even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. <clears throat> and uh, just uh, in my interactions with uh, older people in the last uh, year or so, uh, there is a, a, a growing fear uh, with all that our world is, is, is dealing with now. Uh, and it's important for our, our elderly saints and those of age to know that, that God will not forsake you, that our trust and our confidence must be in him. Even as we get older and even as we lose a step and may not have the same physical prowess that we once possessed, it's important for us to know that God is by our side and he will help us navigate through the challenges of day-to-day of -day life. Fear confronts us all in one area or another at, at some point. Uh, we've considered uh, the disciples' fear of being killed by the furious storm uh, while Jesus was on board sleeping. Uh, we've considered the corporate fear that confronted the Israelite army in the form of the giant Goliath. And we've considered the fear of legendary King David, who is getting up in age and being confronted with enemies eager to consume him believing him to be vulnerable and without God's help and protection. It is clear based on the scriptures we've looked at today that God's remedy for fear is a confident reliance on him and a preoccupation and trust in his word. Uh, let me say that again. It is clear based on the scriptures that we just briefly looked at today that God's remedy for fear is a confident reliance on him through, through relationship and then a preoccupation and trust in his word. Uh, it reminds me of uh, this, this strategy of, of, of confronting fear, reminds me of uh, uh, a story in Genesis chapter 30 verses uh, 25 through 43 tells the story of Jacob and how he took fresh cut branches from poplar, almond, and plane trees and made white strips on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. And uh, he would have the animals made in front of these branches. And uh, Jacob was able to produce a certain type of animal of a stronger stock that would go towards his flock uh, through this strategy. And I believe that that's the Lord's strategy for believers as well as it relates to us staying in God's word and, and keeping his word at the forefront of our mind and our hearts uh, and, and, and meditating on it. Um, I, uh, I, I believe that was God's message to Joshua when he told him in Joshua 1, 8 and 9, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. So God's word is important. Uh, to healthy and successful Christian living, not only for warfare, but anything that we face. It's important that we 
find out what God is saying about that subject, and then that we meditate upon it and, and that we replay it. And I know God has uh, been challenging me uh, in that area uh, more and more. And um, as I was thinking about the message, I was uh, thinking about uh, many times when we're on hold uh, with a service or <clears throat> maybe we're trying to call to deal with Best Buy or someone, many times they'll play messages about their products, services, or policies, okay? And if you listen to the repeated messages over and over and over again, many times you'll discover the answer that you were looking for. Or you'll find out something that you didn't know right there in the midst of that repeated message. And I believe that God wants us to uh, have that same uh, system at work in our heart and minds with his word regarding those things that are confronting us and causing fear in our hearts. He wants us to play his word repeatedly. And then as we meditate upon his word, then many times within his word, we'll see and identify the very solution uh, that we need uh, to our situation. And God can bring his peace in that area of our hearts and our lives. Amen. And uh, another scripture that uh, I believe God wants us as a people of God to meditate upon, especially during COVID uh, days that we're living in, is, is found in uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 14 uh, through 16, where it says, do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Okay, so it says, do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened, all right? But set, a, set apart Christ as Lord. So as we set apart Christ as Lord, as the disciples found out on that boat uh, in the middle of that furious storm, then we can begin to receive his peace and not be frightened at the things that will frighten other people. Amen? And when, when the rubber really meets the road, uh, uh, one scripture that is just uh, catch all when it comes to fear is found in uh, Psalm chapter 46, verses one through three. And it reminds us that God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble, whatever that trouble may be, you put the label on it. It says, therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Those are some pretty drastic circumstances. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, Selah. In the midst of all that, God is our refuge and strength and an ever press, present help in the time of trouble. Amen. Let's bow in a word of prayer as we conclude our lesson today, our time together. And uh, let's, let's uh, take whatever fears you may have to the Lord in prayer. Uh, let's bow our heads. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have joined us today, Lord God. We ask that your word would comfort them uh, during uh, those times that they are confronted with fear, Lord God. We pray that you would uh, allow your word to come back to their memory, to strengthen them and to encourage them and cause them to uh, be victorious, Lord God. Just as you uh, rebuke the wind and the waves uh, for those disciples on that boat, Lord God. We all have situations that we need you to uh, rise up in us, Lord God, and to cause us to rebuke the wind and the waves that beat and come against us, Lord God. So we thank you for your word, Lord God, and we thank you for uh, the victory that you've given us in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in today's Bible study. Uh, at this time, uh, if it's your time to give, we ask that you would give an offering uh, with one of the 
at one of the three portals that you'll see on your screen there. If this ministry has blessed you in some way or another, uh, we pray that you would sow into it and uh, uh, allow it to uh, bless the ministry that we may continue to bring you uh, the word of God and, and life-changing messages. So thanks for joining us. Please continue to uh, tune in as uh, the other teachers continue to bring uh, powerful words. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us. God bless you. Go in peace.